Hey guys, thanks for joining. This is the very first sermon that we are recording for Childish Faith Ministries. Um, it's Lee Fulton and me, Heather Savon Fulton. Lee and I will be posting more words, more sermons, more music, and we want you guys to stay connected with us. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time. guys welcome back to my youtube channel i'm so glad that you decided to watch this video go ahead and subscribe to my channel and then we'll get right into it so today we're going to be in acts 9 verses 19 through 31 this story is after saul's conversion as a christian we know that he used to persecute christians he was a pharisee he was not about that jesus life but in Acts 9, Saul gets converted, and then he's baptized, and he's a new creation in Christ, hence the shirt I'm wearing today. Like many of us, early on in our faith, as soon as we get baptized, like, I know so many people who are on fire and just want to tell people of the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what Saul is doing here. So if you'll open your Bibles, get a Bible, your notebook, read along with me in Acts 9 verses 19 through 31. Now, for several days he was with disciples who were at Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All those hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, Is this not he in Jerusalem who destroyed those who called this name and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength and co-founding the Jews who lived at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Now let me stop there. They're already questioning Saul's motives and Saul's faith, okay? We're gonna keep reading along verse 23. When many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with him. They were also watching the gates day and night so that they might put him to death. Now they're seeking to kill Saul just for preaching the gospel. This is crazy. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a large basket. Saul at Jerusalem, verse 26. When he came to Jerusalem, he was trying to associate with disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing he was a real disciple because of who he once was. But Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and testified to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Barnabas is talking about Saul. And he was with them, moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews, but they were attempting to put him to death. But when the brethren learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. Okay, I know that may be a lot for you, a lot to read, but there definitely are some key points in this scripture that I definitely want to point out to you guys. Whether you have been a Christian for a while or you're brand new to this, um, let's just take a second to pray and ask the Lord to reveal himself through this word. God, we love you and come before you just seeking more, seeking more wisdom, more understanding of your word. God, would you just reveal to us what you want us to know in this scripture, what you want us to see, Father. I pray that we would have eyes to see, ears to hear, and heart that is willing to learn. Amen. So we're starting in 19 where Saul is preaching the word of Christ, okay? He says, Jesus is the son of God, right? And people are like, is this not the man who destroyed those who called his name, who called on Jesus' name? 
So they are not really believing, like, Saul is converted. Like, this dude was wicked. He used to, you know, bash Christians. Like, he did not, he was not about that life. And so they didn't want to believe that Saul was a new creation in Christ. And that brings me to my first point, is that sometimes it takes time for people to regain their trust in you once you become a new creation in Christ. Um, not many people will be open to your conversion and will find it odd, especially if they don't know Christ, right? Um, but some people will be supportive of your journey. You can say that Jesus saved me all the time, but if you're not walking the walk and if you're not living your life out for Christ, so we're going to turn to Hebrews 12, 1 and read that scripture. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And that's exactly what Saul is doing here. And, and sometimes, you know, it says right here, lay aside every encumbrance and the sin in which so easily entangles us. You know, sometimes that means letting go of some old friends or some old ways. You know, once you are born again and made a new creation in Christ, you are to put on Christ. And, some, and everything that is not Christ needs to go to the ground, basically. Uh, it needs to be nailed to the cross. And so sometimes that means old hobbies, old habits, old friends, old ways. And, you know, Saul was in this group of the Pharisees. He had a group of people he was around. And I'm sure that he had to, you know, ditch those people in order to walk in who God called him to be. Many of you probably know this, but maybe if you're watching, you don't. Saul, later in Acts, God gives him a new name um, and calls him Paul which means small or humble. And so we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians 5.17 and read what that scripture says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Amen. I don't want any of my old things to latch on to me anymore. I don't want, need them to be dragging me down. It says that we are a new creature. The old things have passed away. They have literally died away once we take on um, the cross of Jesus Christ. Behold, the new things have come, the new things of Christ, the new ways in which the Lord is going to instill in you. Kindness, gentleness, compassion. He's going to give you a new heart for people and for yourself. It brings me to my second point, point number two. People will be skeptical of your transformation and will question you about it. That is with anything. Even if somebody went to the bad side, we would be questioning them like, why are you doing this? Why are you acting this way? Um, it's the same way when you come on to the good side. And people will question you. I remember being questioned as a baby Christian, Heather why are you not clubbing anymore? Heather, why are you not partying anymore? Heather, why don't you drink anymore? Why are you not doing this? You're acting differently. It's funny because I could feel in my spirit that God was calling me higher and I was being convicted as a new Christian to not do these things anymore, to literally lay the things down and to let them pass away, right? And first, Peter 3.15 says, be prepared to give an answer for the hope that is in you. And I had to let people know, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian now. I seek Jesus now. Like, I want to follow him. And, you know, these old things that I was doing with you guys, what I was doing with the people in high school or with college, like, those things didn't seem right to do anymore. Um, and I needed to be prepared to give an answer so brother or sister, whoever is watching this, you need to be prepared to give an answer when people question you. Why are you the way you are? Why are you following Jesus? And if they don't know that you're following Jesus, but they can see that you're living a lifestyle that is different and that is set apart, you need to be able to give, you know, a testify again uh, for that. 
sip in my drink. Even going further, backing it up again to 2 Corinthians, a few lines down, um, 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, comma, because I'm going to stop right there. We are to carry Christ within us, on us, his spirit. We are to be his ambassadors. You know, sometimes early on in your faith, to be an ambassador of Christ is scary. It's like, what? I, I just accepted Christ. Like, I don't know all of this. How am I supposed to support and talk about all of this? Especially me, I didn't know much. All I knew was I needed a savior desperately to come into my life and renew me, okay? So therefore we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. Whew. All right. So that brings me to my third point, And we will go back to Acts 9. That you cannot do this journey alone. We are not meant to walk alone on this journey as a new creation in Christ, as a new Christian. Even if you've been a Christian for 10 years, you are not meant to do this journey alone. It says later in the passage that Barnabas took a hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described it to them because the apostles didn't believe that Saul really was changed and new. But Barnabas took a hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described it to him. To him, how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had talked to him, and how at Damascus he had spoken boldly out in the name of Jesus. Barnabas was telling the apostles, Hey, this guy was standing up for Jesus. Saul was standing up for Jesus. He was preaching his name on the street in this city. And then after that, he was he was with them. It says, and he was with them, moving about freely in Jerusalem. Guys, we can be free in the Lord today. Speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And then he, throughout the whole, you know, book of Acts, Paul, I mean, Saul, who later is Paul, goes and is in community with Christians, like-minded people. So you need someone to come alongside you in agreement with your faith. And that's exactly what Barnabas does. Barnabas came to Saul's side and testified of his new character. Some of us will definitely have people like that. Some of us will not. But essentially, Saul found a new friend group and it found like-minded people to do life with. Brothers and sisters, I hope that encourages you. And I hope that that this scripture, you can go back and read it for yourself, verses 19 through 31, or even read the whole book of Acts. That's what me and my husband are doing right now, and it's definitely giving us life. And for those of you who have been Christians for a long time and haven't read the book of Acts, I would highly recommend it. Um, and those of you who are watching this for the first time, you have no idea who this Jesus guy is. You have no idea or you do, or you, you, you have been going to church for a while, but you really haven't committed your life over to Jesus. Um, the Bible tells us that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, I invite you. I invite you to just submit yourself to the Lord and say this prayer with me. God, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe you sent your son, Jesus to die on the cross for me. And he rose from the grave three days later. I confess my sins before you and I accept your love for me. Will you come into my heart and transform my life so that I may bring glory to you? I receive that I am a new creation in Christ. Thank you, God. Amen. So, I love praying that prayer anytime I get the time, chance to pray that at a church or when I'm watching a preacher online or someone giving a word online. I love just igniting that trust again, igniting that desperation in me that I need Jesus. And if you prayed that prayer, let, let me know in the comments. Let me message me. We want to celebrate with you. 
that you are now one with the Lord and you are have entered into his kingdom and that you brother or sister are a new creation in Christ shout out the her legacy T know that heaven rejoices with every new believer that comes to know Christ also, if you have any prayer requests, let us know in the comments. We would love to pray for you. Thank you so much for just joining with me in God's word, the living word, the bread of life. Until next time. Thanks, guys. When I'm weak, you are strong. And when I feel like I can't go on, you are lifting me higher and higher above the waves every day